This is Donald Westlake, aka Richard Stark. Under this name, he uh, wrote his maybe most famous crime fiction books uh, around the guy Parker. And this is Darwin Cook, who uh, adapted um, in the last years in uh, the, the Parker novels in comic book form, and they were published by IDW in four nice volumes. Wait. Oh. Yeah. Here yeah, you have them. The Hunter, The Score, The Outfit, Slayground, and you, uh, one and two were available also in this oversized martini edition format. And I've waited forever that the last two will come out in uh, the same format, but they didn't. And so I grabbed them when they're um, now dirt cheap, or well, seven euros each of these books. I consider that pretty cheap. But here's the real baby, the Martini edition. Uh, this is my Bible. This is my Fantastic Four number one, or whatever you want to call it. This is the real book. It's perfectly made with this Parker face all over the slipcase and hardcover. The embossing, but it's real, <laughs> real artificial leather or plastic uh, surface, not the cheap one you get with the DC books, for an instance. <clears throat> and I believe there are some other uh, variants uh, in terms of how it is made around, uh, around uh, Maybe some with a soft cover, but I don't know. And from the very opening of the book, you have this 60s, 50s feel. Um, in regards of how a book should look, how um, the art is presented and Darwin Cook of, uh, Cook's art, of course, um, is as if it's taken right out of the 50s or 60s. And that's um, Scott Dunbeer, I believe, the editor, uh, who had made this possible. So, of course, you know Darwin Cooker. Here are some pictures uh, of the movies and old Uh, uh, novels, the, the novels, the original novels, um, with these pulpy covers, which are fantastic. And I must say, I read this interview with Darwin Cook, and uh, he was interviewed by uh, Brew Baker and some other guy, and it's very interesting what he has to say. And uh, here you can see a page in the work of Parker. So the uh, two storylines in the Martini edition um, oh, which actually starts here. They are connected to each other and they start with this long sequence where there's really f very few talking and it's almost a silent sequence for many pages, gorgeous Darwin Cook art on this toned yellowish paper with the gray shadows 
and stuff. Um, it's a bold beginning, almost as bold as this killer guy Parker, who has no moral. Um, and yeah, we have him. Yeah, he looks on page I don't know twelve or something. Um, <clears throat> it's the first time we 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 see him really, and he uh, sees him self in the mirror um, yeah fantastic uh, and um, as I said it the two parts in this first book um, are connected and there are shorter stories um, between them uh, who link these two uh, stories so it, so it's just one big tome and uh, perfect binding as you can see here by the way it opens nearly 100% flat it's it's fantastic so where was i um yeah we have one big narrative going on from page 1 to the last page and so it's really um, not just a gimmick to put these stories in one big book. It, it's it's perfect, and every page has uh, every storyline or part of the storyline has its own color scheme because it's all duotone. Darwin Cook experiments with different approaches to to uh, tell the Parker stories. So there are some pages which are pretty text heavy, in com uh, especially in contrast to the long silent parts. In some, he, there are a, f a few pages with um, prosa, with uh, just text. And here he changes his art style to show a series of hits of uh, robberies uh, done by Parker and his pals. Pals is very relatively because they, they die pretty easily besides uh, Parker and he doesn't shy off killing some guys who uh, he's working with when he thinks um, the man doesn't do his job well. So here we have this totally cartoony way of presenting some part of the story. And since it la uh, don't last too long and we get our Parker pretty quick back, it's totally fine by me. So it's a perfect made book perfectly presented uh, superb drawing superb storytelling I couldn't praise this book more and honestly I don't know <laughs> why it's not um, out of sale uh, already because this book is oh, when, when it was made uh, 2011 and it's still around and maybe that's the reason why they didn't produce the letter books in the same format too. And uh, as I um, already said, I waited nearly forever to, for the Martini edition too. But maybe that's a good thing because these books together are, were a bit around 13 14 euros together and that's crazy cheap and and it almost hurts me because these books are much smaller as you can see but uh, perfectly made books in their own right again we have this color scheme going on here for the whole book because it's just a part um, and this is one story concluded story this is another concluded story so it makes sense to present them in two different books 
But uh, as they said here in the back of the sleigh ground, Parker will return in 2015. I didn't have seen anything Parker like in the last time. Maybe I'm wrong, but if there is a bit of more Parker, maybe they do Martini Edition too. Don't know. So, uh, and to be honest with you, these two books are a bit weaker than part one and two. Slayground is uh, the story of a very exceptional heist Parker did with his um, friends, uh, quote on quote of friends, uh, a gang of a gang of gangsters, Ocean Eleven style, um, which is the obvious uh, reference for this book here. Oh, did I say? Oh, it's it's. Both books are about heists, but uh, actually I was talking about the score. Yeah. And the score suffers mainly from um, from the fact that uh, there are too many gangsters involved in the storyline. Uh, in a way that's uh, pretty funny because uh, Parker uh, modeled these gangsters after artist colleagues of him. Uh, with, for an example, it should be Phil Noto. And Palm is Jimmy Palmiati. And Cho, you can guess it, Frank Cho. And Chambers, what? Dave Ch uh, Dave Johnson and so on. There's a whole gang of characters uh, crammed into the storyline and beautiful women, of course, uh, Darwin Cook style with this distinguished 60s look to them and fantastic art. But the story as I said, it's a bit convoluted with characters, and so um, Parker, um, Darwin Cook, manages uh, to keep the story going, to let you know whoever does what. Um, but a hmm, bit many characters for a story that is eventually too short. And Slayground, hmm. Slayground is another beast of its own because um, it's a qu pretty quick read, uh, even though it's not much thinner or isn't thinner than the other books, but it has overall very much of these silent passages, very few text, believe me, if... Uh, you see here otherwise and it's very predictable maybe the predictability of this book uh, you read it uh, through the half of the book and you know how it ends it's great fun though how uh, all things develop uh, in detail but the overall storyline you figured it out I guess you can figure it out pretty easily and pretty fast so um, so this for a pretty rushed review for books who deserved a more <clears throat> um, accurate uh, um, review than I can do today, but I have to give my son his mobile back. So that's for now. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.